Hello friends, I am Dr. Tarpan Shah and today I am going to give you an idea about role of physiotherapist in industrial health with the special emphasis on respiratory disease, dysfunction and physiotherapy management. Uh, recently I have taken a seminar on this topic at Sri Bharti Maya College of Physiotherapy Surat. So I thought of uh, giving some idea to you all as well. Now industrial health okay, uh, or uh, role of physiotherapist in different industries. Why there is a need for the industrial health because of industrial revolution. There were lots of changes that has occurred in the industrial side okay, from manually now everything is operated through the machine and uh, production manufacturing has like almost at a speed of light. But there are certain industries in which there is uh, chances of uh, problem that may occur with the respiratory system, especially the industries related to the steel production, coal mining, fabrics and many more. And uh, here in this pic you can see with me Dr. T. Ramesh uh, who has given me an opportunity to treat the patient in the industry and this pic is somewhere around in the year 2009 it has been taken. Okay, let us see this occupational different diseases which we see. Occupational lung conditions that have been caused by the materials a person is exposed to within the workplace. So now there are six main diseases which I had mentioned over here. First one is occupational asthma. That means bronchial asthma only but there are some triggering factor which will aggravate the symptoms of the asthma. Bronchiolitis, obliterance, inhalational injury which is very common in the person who is doing a welding work that means fabrication industry, uh, fabrication industry yes. And then ILD, interstitial lung disease uh, for a person who is working in the textile industry or who is exposed to the cotton dust. In Surat presently we see a good number of cases with the ILD. Again I have seen that uh, from West to Bengal okay, many patients with the ILD. Pneumoconiosis is a broad term. It includes uh, conditions like asbestosis, silicosis etc. Asbestosis means when a person is exposed to the uh, asbestos they can lead to the asbestosis and silica it can lead to the silicosis. And uh, the last one is your lung cancer which is very severe you know involvement uh, that may occur in your respiratory tract okay, and which can be fatal as well. Now this disease can be caused directly or due to the immunological response to exposure to the variety of dust, chemical or the organisms. And uh, substance known to cause lung disease it includes coal dust, asbestos, silicon, barium etc. Now let's see this one or two condition in detail. Asbestosis, repeated exposure to asbestos. It is used for various industrial purpose such as insulation and car brake linings. So in this type of industry, the person may expose to the asbestos. Now the fibers of asbestos in the air are inhaled and it becomes lodged in the lungs. And as a result, the lung tissue is scarred and the lungs are unable to contract and expand normally and it can lead to the asbestos asbestosis can lead to the asbestos lung cancer now there is no cure for the asbestosis only you can give a supplementary treatment like oxygen therapy okay high or low flow oxygen delivery system chest physiotherapy annual influenza vaccination so that they can have a less seasonal flu and the smoking cessation maybe in the form of a patient education counseling uh, nicotine patch, lozenges, etc. Brown lung disease also called bisinosis again commonly seen in the people who is uh, you know working in a cotton industry it is a restrictive airway disease that leads to the airway obstruction as a result of exposure to the cotton dust very common in the cotton worker and chronic bisinosis is irreversible due to the scarring of the lung tissue. Again here also the treatment it includes stop smoking nebulization you can give bronchodilator you can give mucolytics you can give steroids okay as per the need oxygen therapy again a uh, high or a low flow oxygen delivery system try to improve the physical activity level within the limit of the patient give the breathing exercise okay uh, maybe you can start with the positioning to relieve the breathlessness first lip breathing and then diaphragmatic breathing exercise reduce the exposure to the cotton dust so that comes and comes here is your personal protective devices now what are the occupation that can lead to the lung cancer now we are going for the third uh, 
disease okay that is your lung cancer so aluminum production coal industry mining iron and steel industry painting rubber production these are the occupations where there is a chances of lung cancer is more what are the agents that can cause uh, lung cancer the arsenic asbestos cadmium silica dust nickel ionizing radiation coal tar diesel exhaust etc in routine also you'll found some people they like to have uh, you know smell or uh, of a petrol or a diesel or even the nail polish or uh, that type of agents okay but basically it contains even the painting work where it is going on okay so but it contains the harmful chemicals lung cancer you have to remember that lung cancer account for 27 percentage of all cancer death making it the deadliest cancer okay out of 100 27 percent is your lung cancer then breast cancer prostate colon pancreas liver ovary etc now uh, you must be aware Yuvraj Singh a famous cricketer had uh, lung cancer and pancreas can pancreatic cancer you must have heard that uh, Steve Job had a pancreatic cancer okay now what is the role of physiotherapist okay early intervention and identification of the needs okay so start the treatment as early as possible identify what is the need for that particular patient evaluation and the treatment a focus on early right to work and the work maintenance and development of supportive workplace culture okay develop such a culture at the workplace so that uh, everybody can work without exposure to the harmful agents targeted education and self-management focused on active rehabilitation that means your advice to the general manager will be different your advice to the deputy manager will be different your advice to the clerical worker will be different your advice to the engineer will be different etc so basically targeted population and you give the education and you focus on the active rehabilitation that means what uh, three clinical pearls i will give you okay which you have to remember the first one is whenever it is possible by the patient to do the exercise actively don't do it passively that is the first thing you have to remember second thing is when you are doing the patient education first tell the patient second teach the patient and third train the patient so just by uh, just telling the once patient it is not sufficient you have to teach them under your supervision and train them then only patient will be able to do it can be even your simple breathing exercise also and third one the patient education should be in the language which the patient understand and not in the language which the patient knows okay so these three points you have to remember a plan integrated and collaborative multidisciplinary team approach is needed regular monitoring and review is needed and evaluation now how should we manage our case primary treatment is removal of exposure if it is not possible to remove can exposure be controlled to control the disease okay yes or no can we go with the personal protective device okay like a mask okay etc and keep in position with the medication control okay if required let the patient to have medicine and start with the physiotherapy management it starts with the management of breathlessness management of cough with expectoration management with the restriction in the activity of daily living okay and uh, for that we have a different approaches that we have to go ahead so physiotherapy part I'm not uh, teaching you in detail but uh, overall uh, we mostly go with the symptomatic management because in many of the lung uh, occupational uh, lung disease we have seen that the normal functioning area of the lung it will be replaced by it it goes for the scarring and later on it become fibrosed once it becomes fibrous that becomes non-functional area so the work of that area has to be uh, given to some other area that means we have to train the other area so for that purpose okay what we need to do is we need to give the treatment as per the patient's presentation so thank you very much for uh, watching this video